Hey guys, welcome to a non-special episode. And uh, I want to start off by giving uh, a shout out to my friend Tim Lohman at Low Volts. Now you know that we make coffee can guitars here. And if you can make a guitar out of, out of a coffee can, there's something wrong with you. But if you can actually play a guitar that's made out of a coffee can, where is it? Yeah, I need this, sorry. Take two, yeah. Hey Tim, hope you're doing well. You know what? Tim Lohman is playing at the Whiskey Go-Go at, at the end of March, so Whiskey Go-Go in Los Angeles, yeah. Have a look for that. I'm going to give you a link below. There's going to be a number of artists that pop up here. But what is this episode about? Well, we've been seeing some decent guitars come through here lately. We had a Gretsch Electromatic from 1954. You've seen a 1918 Gibson come through here, and you're going to see more of this one. This is a 1932 Regal, and if you look real close, you're going to be able to see some places where Fred Wallach he has touched this guitar in some places that he hasn't, and we're going to talk about that. But tonight, we're going to get away from some of the best guitars that have been here, and we're going to move into the scary territory of some of the worst guitars that have been to the shed and I think you're going to get a guest appearance from what might have declared itself the winner. So let's start off with the first guitar I ever made. Um, the action on that one isn't too bad. It's a your father's um, box that beats yo mama up there but this is your father. <laughs> it's it's terrible. It's got matchbooks. It's got the worst tuners. It's got a notch down neck. Um, it does have a pickup, but the only redeeming thing about this is it is signed by C6 Steve and Dan Magnuson, his drummer, and he has actually played this guitar, believe it or not. So, what do you think about this one? Okay. Now we've got some recent additions. Oh, like this one. Remember this one, the metal one? I did an episode, I think, about this one. Has it come out yet? If it has, it's up there. If not, it will be. But but think about this. Here's what I say about this guitar as soon as that motorcycle guy goes by. Keep going. Keep going. Wow, that's my hero right there. So anyway, look at this one. The headstock has been broken off. There's a chunk missing out of it. You see that? It's screwed on. But this guitar, think about this. It's a steel body, but not a resonator. When have you ever seen that? So I said before, and I'll say this again. Somebody somewhere said, hey, the average male American is so easy to market to. You gotta make it heavy. If it's heavy, it's worth more money. You gotta chrome it like a, like a bumper on a 1957 Chevy. Because if it's chrome, it's cool. And you gotta carve a palm tree in it because that way somebody might think it's a one of them resonators from 19 the 30s and it's very valuable you see that it's got dual humbuckers on it and it's got a lot of chrome and other scrap apparatus on it so you know what this is probably the most ridiculous example of a guitar that should not be um and i'm going to put it together and and do its thing i'm going to show you how to epoxy a broken neck and put some chick flick teal stuff on there but i do have some nice parts to this thanks to Rob at Guitar 48. Go see Rob. Some of these guitars have come from Rob. Okay. So we got the we got the cigar box. We got the chrome one. What else? Oh, look at this one. 
This is a Fender New Porter. Have you ever seen this headstock? Oh wow, that, those are good tuners back there, by the way. On uh, this, how about that? I can literally, literally stick my hands underneath those strings. Do you see it? This thing is caved in. It's completely caved in. The neck is broke out. It does have a bolt on neck, so that's pretty cool. But you think this is the worst one to ever hit the shop? The shed? Jed? No, I don't think so. Now we're getting into the stuff we really need to think about. You're talking diamond plate on the neck, more hardware holding the neck on than your average Ace hardware. Yeah, hey, Acton Ace Hardware, number one to me for a good <laughs> guitar parts supply, especially in my early years, but what about number 12? Remember t number 12? <laughs> Look at that headstock bolted on front and back. Um, tuners popping off, so we'll put a different one on there because this thing's got winch line. You don't need fret markers if you got some fingernail polish and some uh, plumber's Teflon tape. Look at that neck. Look how many bolts, shelf brackets, God knows what. And if feedback is a problem, you just put F hole covers on with some gaffer tape you might have it around. And why do you need a three-way switch when you can just disable it with a long piece of electrician's tape? Um, the action on this, look at that. But you know what? Troy Murrah plays stuff like this. He does great with it. In fact, Troy Murrah and his counterpart drummer who drums on junk, Tyler Whiteside, will be at Alex's bar in Long Beach California cultural capital of the world this Saturday fairly early in the evening too so I think I should tell you about restaurant below and give you a link so you can go see restaurant this Saturday if you're in Long Beach California if you're not you should really start heading this way but I always thought by the way this is one of my prized possessions I traded Troy that's his signature. It's got the original pancake Kleenex box pickups. This thing roars. I traded uh, Troy. This is a, a, a K model 6535. And I traded one that looked like it was brand new to get this one. This is the prize of my junkie collection. So, do we have a winner? No, we don't. I have been informed that the winner is a guitar that we did practically everything to. I did a 12-part playlist. That's how screwed up it was right up there right about now. It was a Harmony H1213 that we affectionately know as Punkin. Punkin was stripped of all its paint. It's painted on binding and it was left to dry out. Its body cracked and warped, braces coming off. It looked exactly like a pumpkin. Maybe that's why I named it Pumpkin. That's right. So we got Pumpkin together. We shipped Pumpkin off to somebody in North Carolina. North Carolina cultural capital of the world and um, there's an artist out there, his name is Jody Carroll. So he got Punkin, and uh, we're gonna see him trying to play Punkin right now. Punkin never got any better, Punkin's still Punkin, uh, but <laughs> let's watch what Jody Carroll can do with Punkin. Hit it, Jody. Thank you. 
Burning Man. Yeah. Up this morning, I blues working like a man. This is a good morning blues, boy. Give me your hand. Staring, just to drive my blues away. Studying rain, Lord, drive my blues away. Go down, down the steelery, gonna stay there all day. Drive it away. See my pony run <laughs> down the racetrack. Don't see my pony run, good boy. All right, Jody. Hey, thanks for being a good sport with that, Jody. But here's what I do want to tell you. I'm going to give top billing down below um, to uh, Jody Carroll. You get to his sites, get some of his music. If you like the kind of music that uh, my guitars will make coming out of this channel with slides and roots music and stuff, I'm going to give you a link to his catalog below, and I'm going to give you a link to the one that I pick. Um, it's an awesome, awesome, if you like a blue standards coming out of people like Fred McDowell and, and uh, Sun House and stuff, you're going to love Jody. But I picked this one because he's in a different country, and he announces the name Fred McDowell, and I think the people in the audience actually thought that he was Fred McDowell but anyway there's a couple albums down below you want to listen to the first couple songs on those albums and I'll listen uh, and I'm gonna give those to you below please give Jody some of your money and um, and uh, I'll give you a link to one of his songs that I really really like at the end of the episode anyway Guys, we got some good stuff coming ahead. Um, I actually took this 1932 resonator up and saw Fred with it because, you know, there's always these questions like, if you get something like this, what do you do with it? Can you clean it up? Can you polish up the cone? Should you change the cone? I mean, the, the cone cover. Don't play around with your cone on something like this. Let, let, me, let me touch on that while you're here. If I take this cone cover off and I pull the cone out, there's a round support there. And this cone has been sitting on that support for a really long time. And there is nothing uniform about that round piece of wood that this cone nests on. So if you were to turn the cone just a little bit, you are exposing the cone, the whole surface of the cone that holds it in place to a brand new exposure it's never had. So just be really careful. Anyway, watch for that episode where I take this to Fred and show him what I got. And he does a little bit of work here. You can see he's worked here and here. And you're going to get some useful hints. One more time. Thanks, Tim Lohman. Thank you, Troy Murrah and Tyler Whiteside. And most of all, thank you, Jody Carroll. And I'll see you all next time.